If you've already installed Comfy UI and are now ready to start getting creative with your own workflows, then this crash course will equip you with the core skills needed to make your ideas a reality. I'll be providing key workflow examples, time-saving hints and tips, settings you may not be aware of, as well as how to start expanding beyond the basic nodes you get. By the end, you'll have a toolbox full of comfy essentials ready to unleash your creations upon the world. So, without any further ado, let's get to it. Starting right at the beginning with a blank canvas, you'll soon see how easy it is to make a workflow that generates an image from text. You can, of course, do a whole lot more than the workflow I'm about to show you, with one such example of doing a whole lot more being my free reposer workflow. This started out with the idea of, can I make a consistent character just using a single face image and an image that I want that character to be posed in. As it turns out, like you can see there, yes, you can. I've got my input face image. There's the pose, as you can see, it sort of detects the pose there and then generates my character using that pose. If I want a new pose, I simply pick that new pose and then regenerate. And there I have my character in the new pose. After I'd created that one, I then expanded it to swap clothing and backgrounds as well. So it's, uh, yeah, if you have a quick look at the number of nodes there, it's very easy to get carried away. All right, getting back to basics, back to our blank canvas, adding nodes is the very first thing that you need to master. And like with this example here, you'll typically want to start with a case sampler. This is like the main engine of the workflow with controls for things like the seed and guidance scale sampler, all that sort of good stuff. It's also the first thing that appears when you do that double click. There, case sampler, first thing in the menu. That's not the only way that you can add nodes because of course you can do much the same thing by right clicking, add node, sampling, and I've got a case sampler there. There it is. So we've got exactly the same node by doing right click instead of double left click. A third way to add nodes is one that I use quite a lot, and that's where you just drag a little noodle out from the thing and then pick from the list that is provided. There, I've added a model. It's not always the best list, it doesn't always work, but most of the time it is useful. Nodes can be dragged around quite easily, just click anywhere on the blank bits, and you can also resize them from the corners. Press the delete key on your keyboard to delete any selected node. And you've also got a little dot up in the corner, which you can use to toggle whether or not it is collapsed. Time to drag some more noodles out of our little friend there, the K sampler. First thing we want is a text encode prompt we've got there for the positive, and then same again for the negative. The final input we have on that is a latent image. So once again, I'm using that one, and the one I want is an empty latent image. There it's got the size 512. We want to see the image our text will generate. So let's do something with this output. Once again, we'll drag that noodle. We'll do a decode. That gives an, another output we've got there. Okay, and there I'm gonna do preview image. Of course, you could save it if you wanted to save. Wow, that's almost a complete workflow. If you look very closely at the colors for the inputs and outputs on each node, you'll see there is still a red VAE and some yellow nodes to connect as well. Matching the colors makes it really easy, but you should also see that when I try to drag a noodle out, all the other options go gray and literally the only one I can connect it to is that VAE. So let's do the same thing with the yellow nodes. We've got a clip into a clip a clip into a clip, and now we have a completed workflow. All it needs now is input from your imagination. So let's use this as an awesome positive prompt. Click up our Q prompt and see what it generates. Excellent. I now have a rather cool rodent. We'll make him a little bit bigger. There, fantastic stuff. So you now want to do something a bit like a high res fix. You want most of the nodes 
that you've already got up there and wired in much the same way. Not a problem, hold down the control key and you can select multiple nodes. Okay, so I've done a little area select there, but you can also select the nodes individually. Press control C to copy. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and then shift control V to paste where my cursor is. And now I've got a, a new set of nodes there and they're already connected. If you don't want them connected, just do a plain control V and that will paste without. They're still selected. So if I hold the shift key, I can also move them around as a group. So if I didn't quite paste them in the right place, that's not a problem either. The other thing you can do is make a little group out of them as well. So if you right click anywhere on the canvas, add group for selected nodes will give them a little group, which makes them even easier to move around and to sort of see what each section does. If you made a mistake, you can just press Control Z and that will undo. So say I moved it down there by accident. Oh, actually I want it back where it was, Control Z, and that will undo. If you if you actually want to undo your undo, you can do control Y and that will redo. Now that's nearly a high res fix, but one thing that's left to do is just change this one noodle because obviously I want the output from that case sampler to go through here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's add a new latent upscale node. There it is, got a search bar there. So you can just type in words to search for. We've got one there, latent upscale. Let's put that in. Okay, so we'll connect that noodle out from there and that new one is going to go into there because I want to do a little upscale. I'm gonna go all the way up to 1024 for that one. If I can type, there it is. I've got my upscale latent node in there. And uh, one last thing to do here, obviously I want the denoise a little bit lower. Otherwise that's gonna just change the image completely. All right, let's fire that one off and see if it works. Will I get a little bit of a latent upscale? Yes, I will. There he goes. He's got a very nice tie. As you can see, there's a little bit more detail. And obviously that's 512 by 512. That's 1024 by 1024. Maybe this set of nodes is something you want to do a lot of, in which case, why not make it a template? Okay, so let's select those three nodes. And if I right click anywhere on the template, I can select save selected nodes as template. I can give it a name. There we go, let's just give it a name for now. And I've now saved those three nodes as a template, which I can pop into any workflow at any time just by selecting that node templates. And there I've got a name. So there, I've done it. And I've got a, another set of templates in there, as you can see, IP Adapter Basic. There you go. So it's very handy when you've got one node which takes a particular set of inputs and it tends to always be the same inputs. So that's quite nice. And here's another little template. I've got node templates prompt everywhere. That's very handy. Just takes the text prompts and prompts things everywhere. So that's absolutely fantastic. But now I've got loads of nodes everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And normally to move, you need to find a bit of blank canvas, but perhaps you can't find a bit of blank canvas because you've tied everything together really neatly and you haven't got any space. But that doesn't matter because you can actually press space wherever your cursor is and that will let you move the canvas around. So there's no need to find a little bit to click. You can just press space and move around whenever you like. Another thing that some people don't like is all these noodles. I mean, look at that spaghetti. Isn't that not very neat at all? Well, there are some things you can do with that. For example, we've got this little cog over here on the menu. And if you scroll down a bit, that will give you link render mode. By default, it's spline, but perhaps you like straight. So there are the straight lines, in which case, there you go. Now we've got things going straight instead. Lots of different options in there, so pick the one that you prefer. Chances are you'll want to add some sort of custom node, but how do you install them and where do you even find what's available? And what about keeping Comfy UI up to date? Well, if you don't already have Comfy UI Manager installed, then now is the time to do it because it will manage all your custom node and updating needs. Essentially, this is the only custom node you'll need to install this way because then the manager will install everything for you. So I'm gonna go into custom nodes exactly like it says there and then git clone that, copy and paste, download that, restart Comfy UI and you have Comfy UI manager installed. 
really, really easy. If you've not yet installed ComfyUI normally, and so you're using the Microsoft Windows Portable, do note the instructions for that case, where here you'll first have to download and install Git for Windows, and then download their install manager for portable bat. So you can just download that and that will essentially do the git clone command for you. Scrolling down further, other installations are available too. There's instructions there for Linux with vNV and also for Colab notebooks. With Comfy UI Manager installed, you'll now get this extra button down there, Manager and Share as well. Click Manager and you'll get the Comfy UI Manager menu. Here's where you can install custom nodes. Just click Install Custom Nodes and you'll get a whole bunch of things there. As there's lots of nodes, I suggest using the search if you're looking for particular things. And also note these yellow things here will give you information about possible conflicts with nodes you've already got installed. If you've loaded somebody else's workflow, then the install missing custom node button is your friend. And along with the update all button being a lifesaver when it comes to keeping all of your custom nodes as well as Comfy UI itself up to date. Now, one thing you might have noticed is the little badges on some of my nodes. Like this one says Comfy UI IP Adapter Plus. So I know where I got it from. How am I getting those little badges? Well, it's in Manager. There you've got Badge, Nickname, and there are a few other options you can pick as well. Talking of handy little options and settings, this Comfy UI Custom Scripts is another custom node. I suggest you install because it's got loads of additional features. For example, if I go back to that little cog, you'll see a bunch of things in here have a little snake on them, and that's all from the custom node. And one of the things I absolutely love is this option here, always snap to grid. Now by default, when you're moving a node around, you have to hold the shift key to have it snap to grid. But with that ticked, you don't ever have to hold the shift down. It always snaps so you can keep everything nice and neatly aligned. The other thing you get with that is custom colors, which I find really handy. You can right click on a node there, colors, and now we've got a custom colors down at the bottom with a palette so you can go absolutely wild and have some brilliantly colored nodes everywhere. Personally, I find colors really, really handy. Not quite sure how I developed a color scheme, but now I love coloring stuff in and uh, workflows just seem to make sense with colors to me. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other features that this adds as well. So I do suggest going to have a look at the GitHub page for all the extras that you get just with that one custom node. Some people don't like noodles everywhere, and one set of nodes which can really help reduce your noodle load is Use Everywhere, or UE Nodes. This example workflow uses one simple node from that pack, Anything Everywhere 3. It just connects in the model, the clip, and the VAE, so you've got a little self-contained thing there, and anywhere it needs a model, clip, or VAE, it automatically connects. Now, you'll see sort of a double circle around some of them. That's because anything everywhere is connected to that. If you really don't know where things are, then that's absolutely fine because you can show UE links, and then you'll see the noodles that it is hiding. One great way to practice is by using workflows from other people as an example. And I've got a ton of them for you for free over on the A Very Comfy Nerd website. Also, if you're a Patreon, then you'll get bonus workflows too. One thing to note if you're using certain models, such as the SDXL Turbo and Stable Video Diffusion ones, uh, they do have a slightly different license to previous models. As you can see there, Stability AI Non-Commercial Research Community License Agreement. Uh, the main thing there being the new non-commercial edition. Now, they have released some news that there's going to be a subscription model coming soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Should you be feeling creative and ready to start getting your ideas into workflows, but haven't yet installed Comfy UI, then do check out this next video.